Okay, good morning, members of the media. Thanks for coming out to this media conference. First of all, on behalf of the Movement for Social Justice, I want to say to the Muslim community in particular, Eid Mubarak, greetings on the occasion of Eid al fitr on the end of the holy month of Ramadan, and that we hope that the fasting which you endured during the month of Ramadan will strengthen your spirit and your resolve to continue to make Trinidad and Tobago a better, a better country, a better society. So once again, Eid Mubarak to the members of the Muslim community um, who are celebrating Eid today. Secondly, want to congratulate Father Clyde Harvey, a friend and a colleague, a brother, on the elevation to being Bishop of St. George's. Um, the elevation to the position of Bishop is very, very well deserved. Of course, we would have liked Father Harvey to remain here in Trinidad and Tobago, but quite clearly his mission now is in Grenada, and we are sure that the people of Grenada will benefit from his wisdom and his um, experience as a parish priest for very many years here in Trinidad and Tobago, and especially in his effort and struggles and contributions to uplift the communities that are particularly dispossessed and disadvantaged in our country. Thirdly, we want to um, express solidarity with the Charles family of Arima, Calvary in Arima. You recall we had a media conference some weeks ago where we identified that one of our members, activists in the Calvary Hill Arima area, Gregory Hassan Charles, um, was being in the information that we received from him, being targeted and so on for some harassment um, by the police. Um, unfortunately, the family has not heard or seen him since f late Thursday evening. And so since Friday, he's been missing. I myself got the news yesterday evening from one of our MSJ members and a family member of his in the Calvary Hill area late yesterday evening. Um, I was in touch with his mother this morning. Um, the anti-kidnapping squad apparently is involved and the police have been informed. Um, but he has not been seen or heard of since um, late Thursday evening. So we are expressing our solidarity with the family, his family as young children, young son who is very active in football, a very promising young footballer and so on as a teenager, and also other members of the family and the Calvary Hill community in general. Um, and, you know, we'll probably be visiting um, members of the family um, today or tomorrow, and our solidarity is with them at this time. The third, the fourth issue rather that we want to raise, which was the principal subject of our media conference this morning, is that of the flooding and other damage which um, happened as a result of Tropical Storm Brett, which hit Trinidad, um, particularly Trinidad, and to some extent in Tobago, late in the evening of Monday the 19th, in particular probably around midnight um, on the 19th. But of course there was a lot of, of the 19th going into the 20th. And of course there was a lot of rain during the course of that day and the days before. As someone who myself has experienced the impact of a very heavy um, rainfall causing my home and other homes in my community in Medinigans in Prisal to be flooded out some seven years ago. Um, I know what it is like to have your home flooded. It is really a horrendous um, experience. It is a terrible experience and one that no one wishes on anyone um, to have happened to them. Literally having to, sh to, to then wait until the flood waters go down and then to um, push out mud and other debris from your home, having to wash down the place, try to salvage what one could salvage, um, losing 
losing items of value, whether they be things like photographs and, or school books and so on, or items like appliances, refrigerators, and washing machines and so on, beds, mattresses, clothes. It's a horrendous experience. And so on behalf of the MSJ, I once again want to express our solidarity with all of those who are being terribly affected by Tropical Storm Brett. Having, having said that, we also want to say that the response um, by the authorities was not appropriate or adequate. What seemed to be happening is that the ODPM, the regional corporations, other first responders and so on, seemed to be waiting for the storm to hit and then subsequent to the storm hitting, then to mobilize, to go into communities that were affected. And that mobilization um, was slow in coming. Obviously, the roads were, were underwater and so on, but the response was, was too little, too slow. In our view, what should have happened as soon as the storm possibility had been indicated by the Met Office, which would have been sometime late on Friday, the central government, Minister of Local Government, Minister of Works and Transport, as they did some months ago, getting large contractors in the country, you'd recall seeing cleanup campaigns with you know, many dozens of large vehicles, trucks, uh, backhoes, all kinds of vehicles and so on, parked up on the side of the road, some doing things, some not doing any things and anything at all. We should have had that level of mobilization from the Friday so that first thing on Tuesday morning in the aftermath of the storm, we could have had heavy duty vehicles going in that could have gone through the floodwaters, um, going into some of these communities together with um, other kinds of, of, um, of material assistance, water, bottled water, foodstuffs and so on in particular, to get to, to persons who are affected and to also move persons who are badly affected and marooned out of their homes into the shelters. That, that process did not take place. Certainly we didn't see it. If it did, we certainly did not see it. And we did not hear of that level of mobilization. So what we want to see is not a kind of gallery mobilization which takes place you know, before anything happens. We want to see that same level of commitment and mobilization in the immediate period before a, a disaster like a storm hits um, so that the response can be almost instantaneous to move people out of their homes who are badly flooded out and so on and also to bring relief, be it food and water, to those who um, cannot provide those things for themselves. And, and so that response was way too slow. We also want to say that, in our view, the Prime Minister's response was way too slow and inappropriate and inadequate. Um, he could have left Tobago on um, early Monday morning when the storm was was being developing um, south, southeast of Trinidad, and he could have then been come into Trinidad and taken charge of the situation in a very visible and direct way. And, and so the criticisms of persons feeling that at the highest level of government, there wasn't that concern and, and caring, those, those criticisms are well founded because even though he may have been in touch by phone or whatever in Tobago, in a situation like this, you needed to have all hands on deck from, from the highest level of government all the way down to the councillors in the various regional corporations. We do want to congratulate all of those who worked very hard to bring relief to persons and who are still working hard to bring relief because obviously there is a thankless task but we want to congratulate and thank them for the, what they did. But we do think that we need a better approach, a, a far more proactive approach to responding to um, disasters such as happened 
with Tropical Storm Brett. We also want to say that um, the response by the business community, some people have responded and citizens have been responding to, to the needs of citizens. Um, we also want to join the call made by others that citizens generally and the business community ought to be making significant contributions to persons who are being badly affected by the storm. It can't only be the government's responsibility to provide relief. Um, others who have the resources and, and can help ought to help in this time of, of need. We have to be our brothers and our sisters keeper at this point in time. But as there are two other major issues um, that, that have emerged um, from this disaster. One, of course, we have been well aware of for a long time, and I'll address that first. It is very clear that this country has been courting disaster by the way in which we behave as citizens, as business people, as government agencies, as a parliament, as a cabinet, or as a government over a long period of time. So we litter, we dump stuff in rivers, and then we pretend as if um, it's not going to affect us, when in fact it does. Business people develop um, real estate um, areas, um, housing areas, without concern for the fact that they are blocking water courses. Others engage in construction of um, houses and, and commercial businesses and so on without any town and country approval, without regional corporation approval, without EMA approval. The EMA and town and country planning division also give approvals for activities which they ought not to give approvals for because the cumulative impacts of these developments um, are causing us to have more water runoff and therefore more flooding. We have quarry operators um, quarrying, some illegally and even those legally, and all of that is also impacting upon our natural environment and our ecosystems and aggravating problems such as flooding and so on when we have heavy rainfall. We, have, we had a government that constructed, started construction of the um, highway between Mondesir and Pinal and Debe. And that highway, in our view, that construction also has contributed to the flooding of, that affected people in Pinal, Debe, in, in the southern, that southern part of the country in what is essentially the Orpuch Lagoon area, the Orpuch Basin area. Um, some people have said to me who got affected by the flooding, I got a call from um, one particular family on Tuesday morning indicating that for the second, only the second time in 40 years, and they live in Debe right on the main road, only the second time in 40 years have they been flooded out, once in 2014, and now in 2017. And they attribute that directly to the construction of the highway and other um, indiscriminate types of, of development. We are calling, therefore, this morning for the immediate passage of the beverage container bill, which would, from going forward, keep a lot of the water bottles, plastic bottles, and so on, out of water courses. We are calling on the EMA and the Town and Country Planning Division to rigidly enforce good and proper building and development practices and to begin to penalize those who have violated the law over the years. The impunity with which development takes place in this country that is resulting in this kind of, of disaster for our people must come to an end. We are also saying that this is further proof that the uh, Mondesir to Debe Highway is not the right development, and therefore the government must ensure that, um, that, that further 
highway construction does not continue and that proper mitigation to what has already been built takes place to avoid further disasters going into the future. We are calling for a, a, a review of quarrying in the country, um, halting of, of, of some of the quarries, and restoration by the quarry owners, <coughs> excuse me, and those who quarry, restoration of the damage that has been done to the environment um, by replanting and so on to ensure that we do not suffer further damage. And also other kinds of projects like mini dams to be built in places like the Caparo River Basin and so on to avoid flooding. There are things that we can do to minimize the impact of events such as um, a tropical storm or very heavy seasonal rainfall and we need to take leadership on these questions and certainly the MSGA today is not simply saying blame this one, blame that one. We are saying there are things that can and must be done and that each one of us, whether we are a citizen who um, dumps garbage in rivers, whether we are a quarry owner, and we are the irony of a quarry owner giving out hampers to people who are, who are flooded out, um, not thinking as to whether or not quarrying, maybe not his quarry, but quarrying causes um, flooding to be worse than it, it ought to be. We're calling on the EMA and the town and country to step up to the plate. We're calling on the government, the parliament, um, to take serious action on these questions to ensure that going forward in the future, we can minimize the impacts. There will always be impacts because a tropical storm is what it is, a tropical storm. Uh, but we need to try to minimize it. We need the building code to be um, passed and enforced so that persons can build their homes in accordance to standards that will avoid or minimize the possibility of things like roofs being blown off and so on. These are some of the measures that must, be, that must take place. Last but by no means least, there has been an outcome of this storm which has nothing to do with people's homes getting flooded or with um, roofs being blown off, businesses suffering losses and so on. And that is what is taking place at the level of the parliament by the two parliamentary parties, the PNM and the UNC. What took place in parliament on Friday with allegations and name calling and racism being thrown about and so on, that must stop. We are saying today that issues such as natural disasters, which affect citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, don't affect members of party A or party B. They affect citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. They don't affect Indians, they don't affect Africans, they don't affect Chinese or Europeans or whatever. They affect citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. And the politics of race must stop by the must be stopped by the UNC and the PNM. They are both guilty of that. There can be no absolutely no um, petty party politicking over the suffering of people. People are suffering and you don't play petty partisan politicking over that. It was disgusting, it was disgraceful, it was demeaning, and it was destructive. And the destruction of that kind of politics to the society and to the development of Trinidad and Tobago will make the destruction of Brett look like Dolly House um, activity. And that is the last point that we wish to make at this media conference this morning. Questions? Well, if somebody is a squatter, um, then there may be, a, and their house was demolished, there may be an issue about how do you 
legally compensate somebody. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. We, we haven't looked at that legal question. But if somebody lost school books, whether they are squatter or not, if they cannot provide, they have no running water, um, and they need drinking water, and they need foodstuffs, and the child's school uniform cannot be washed again because it is beyond the state of, of washing, then they need help because they are people too, they are folks too, and so on. And that has to be addressed. The, the, the broader issue of squatting is, is another question which, which I can't deal with this morning, but there, we do have a major problem of housing and of land in this country. Um, and that will have to be the subject of a separate media conference. Well, the opposition is free to file whatever motion they wish. The speaker's response was um, as a result of the behavior by both the opposition and the government. And so we are, I am speaking on behalf of MSP to both the parliamentary parties. Their behavior was disgusting, disgraceful, demeaning, and destructive. And that is the focus that we have to to, to be on. The issue of the speaker is a side issue as far as we are concerned. The fundamental issue is the behavior of the parliamentary parties and engaging in, in, in race baiting and so on, which has no place in addressing the issue of problems that people have who are citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I know I don't support any of those political parties for what they did in Parliament. I don't support what any of the political parties did in Parliament. And whatever they do after, as a result of what happened in Parliament, we're not interested in that. I don't support, and MSJ does not support what any of them did, and both of them did in Parliament on Friday. They're both wrong. <laughs> 